Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle that was actually inspired by a tweet by Catriona Ag. I'm going to share the information, uh, the link to the tweet and my solution to the puzzle uh, down below so you can go ahead and take a look at it. So we have a circle here and two identical quarter circles. They're all inscribed in the semicircle with radius five as shown. Find the radius of the circle. So we are supposed to find the radius of the quarter circles first, but I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that part. And as I said earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and share the, uh, the puzzle and uh, my solution to that puzzle down below. Okay, so you can go ahead and check it out. All right, so. So I'm going to start with that assumption that if the, the radius of the semicircle is 5, and which is given, then the radius of the quarter circles will be 4. It's basically going to be 4 fets of the radius. So I'm just going to go ahead and label them. Okay. And then I'm just going to make some connections here. So let's go ahead and make some connections. We're going to go ahead and connect the center of the semicircle to that of the circle. So that's gonna be our first connection. That's an important one. And then we're gonna make it a right triangle, of course, to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem, as you know, in these problems. And then I will make another connection here from the circle to one of the quarter circles. And it makes sense because these uh, two figures are tangent to each other. So connecting their centers will almost always be a good idea. And then lastly, uh, I'm going to be drawing a horizontal segment here so that we can just go ahead and complete our picture. Okay, so that's pretty much what I need. That's the plan. So this is a right triangle and this is another right triangle. And as I said earlier, uh, the solution to the puzzle will be down below. So you can go ahead and check it out. And let me just proceed to find the radius of the circle as in the puzzle. Okay, so... Suppose the radius of the circle is r, and we know that this is also r. So this piece is going to be 4 minus r. This is going to be 4, and this is going to be r as well. So we kind of have like a right triangle here. Let me go ahead and shade that for you. Here we go. That's one of the right triangles we're going to use. Uh, we do not know this length yet because we don't know this distance. So I'm going to go ahead and call this x, and I'm going to try to calculate x in terms of the other variables. Now, what about the hypotenuse here? Well, if you go ahead and extend it, if you go ahead and extend that segment here, you're going to notice that this is also r, and the whole thing is the radius for the semicircle, which is 5. So the hypotenuse here is going to be 5 minus r. So I basically, I have two right triangles here that I can use, right? And I have two variables, so I should be able to solve for r. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed. Let's write our first equation. Our first equation is going to be, and by the way, uh, since this whole thing is four, I mean, this is four and this should be one. Why? Because the radius of the semicircle is five. So if you subtract four, five minus four, you're gonna get one, okay? Cool. Uh, that information I'm gonna need for this side length. So this, this one is gonna be x plus one then, okay? Let me go ahead and write that down here. Okay. Awesome. Now, my first equation is going to look like this. 4 minus r squared. And I just want to actually change the color here. Okay. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay. So 4 minus r squared plus x plus 1 squared is going to equal 4 plus r squared, which is the hypotenuse of the larger right triangle that I shaded. That's our first equation. So let's go ahead and simplify this as much as we can. As you know, we have our famous identity. If you subtract a plus b squared minus a minus b squared, that always equals 4ab. So this is going to equal 16r, which is a very helpful identity, by the way. So we have this equation. Let's not uh, square root both sides yet because I have to write the second equation and then I'm going to show you how I uh, solve this system. Okay, in the second um, in the second triangle here, as you can see, okay, it's going to be x squared plus r squared is equal to 5 minus r squared, right? Because the hypotenuse is 5 minus r, remember? Okay, so I'm going to isolate x squared from here. That's going to be, uh, I can go ahead and expand this. 
25 minus 10 r plus r squared minus r squared i'm going to go ahead and subtract that from both sides and that's going to give me zero so x squared is going to equal this now i don't want to take square roots here what i want to do is actually i want to subtract those two quantities because then i'm going to get rid of the quadratic terms which is kind of nice so i don't have to deal with square roots if you go ahead and subtract these two equations side by side you're going to get x plus one quantity squared minus x squared is equal to 16 r minus the quantity 25 minus 10 r from here as you know you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus x squared this is going to give you 2x plus 1 and this is going to be 16 r minus 25 plus 10 r which is equal to 26 minus 20 26 r minus 25 and if i subtract this one from both sides then i'm going to be getting 26 r minus 26 which is kind of interesting right and from here i can divide both sides by 2 and I can write it in the simplest form. I can write it in the simplest form as 13r minus 13. Okay? So this is my x in terms of r, which is cool because I'm trying to solve for x. Now, in any of these equations, doesn't matter which one you use, you can just go ahead and substitute this and solve for the other variable. So in basically, we're trying to solve for r here, right? Okay. So I can just go ahead and um, substitute that. I'm going to use this equation, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and replace x with 13, r minus 13. By the way, we can just write it like this. And I'm going to go ahead and square that plus r squared. I'm using this one, by the way. Equals, if you go ahead and expand it, or we can do it later. Let's go ahead and write it that way. Now, I'm going to square 13, so that's going to be 169 multiplied by r minus 1 quantity squared, which is r squared minus 2r plus 1 plus r squared is equal to 25 minus 2r plus r squared. Okay, let's go ahead and distribute this. I'm going to get 169r squared plus 1r squared. Well, actually, I can just go ahead and cancel these out. That way, I'm going to end up with 169r squared minus, now, 2 times 169 is 338, but you have to subtract 25 from it, right? Uh, so that's going to be, uh, let me go ahead and write it down first. Okay, minus 328, not 28, 38, that should be. Okay, okay, uh, when we multiply by 2, okay, that is 338R plus 169 is equal to 25 minus 2R. Let's go ahead and bring the uh, numbers over here now, right? Uh, by the way, we this is not 2R, we messed up there. Okay, let me go ahead and fix that first. That's not right. Okay, I just realized this is this should be 25 minus 10 r plus r squared, right? So r squared cancels out. So I end up with 25 minus 10 r here, not 2 r. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this negative 10 here, but meaning that I'm going to add 10 r to both sides. So that's going to become minus 328 r. Okay, and then you'll subtract the 25 from the 169. And that's going to give you 144. And this is going to be my quadratic equation that I need to solve. But I'm going to save you the trouble and just, you know, give you the solution. As you know, there are two solutions here. One of them is going to be R equals, which you can call R1 if you want. doesn't really matter. It's going to be 164 plus 16 root 10 all over 169 you can verify this with the quadratic formula and the other solution is going to be 164 minus 16 root 10 divided by 169 obviously when you look at these values and kind of look at your picture uh, kind of roughly have an idea about what the radius is going to look like i think that's going to be a good thing to do because if you think about it like x is you know uh, we don't know the value of x, but okay, we can do this. The radius of the semicircle is about 5, so this is 5 between those two points. So this, this looks like the radius is about maybe one fifth ish or one fourth of that. So something a little over 1 would be reasonable. And if you go ahead and check these out, you're going to notice that the first one actually satisfies the criteria. So that's our answer. The radius of the circle we're looking for. Is this one again? I want to. I want to say thank you to Catriona for this uh, idea, puzzle idea, uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, as you know, the usual things. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know, and see you in the next one. Bye bye.